Greetings AP Calculus BC students. Mr. Record here going to take a look at our examples 12 and 13 from our topic 9.4. It's a long, long road, this unit uh, 9, topic 4, because it serves to, 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 as I said before, refresh your memory on a lot of these vector ideas. But now we're starting to introduce some of the things that are a little bit more heavily linked to calculus. So I would appreciate you hanging in with all of these uh, examples. There's going to be a total of 18. So the light is at the end of the tunnel. I see it. I see it. So we're going to talk about graphing a vector value function. So let's take a look at our first example. So as you can see, here is our example 12. Sketch the vector valued function r of t is t minus 5 times i minus j. So the thing that you might want to consider here, as we did when we were starting to sketch parametric equations, is you could set up your little table of values. A lot of times we call this a t chart. Of course, I would call this more of a pi chart because it kind of looks like pi, right? pi no maybe not and then we could put t x and y as our headings and then we go ahead and you start randomly picking some values that could generate some results so how do you do this well let's say that we pick t as zero seems like a good place to start well the x component here is going to be computed by taking t minus 5 or 0 minus 5 in this case which of course is negative 5 but then the y component or j component they're the same thing is a constant of negative 1 now the thing to remember is that technically r of 0 which is exactly what we've just computed here vector r evaluated at 0 it has to be a vector, and it's the vector negative 5, negative 1. So what we've done is like we've taken our vector gun and we've shot a vector from the origin to the point negative 5, negative 1, which would be down here. So shoot, boom, 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 boom. Notice that there's a bit of a scale change here with this graph. And so what happens is that this ordered pair right here is going to be a point on our vector valued function. All we've got to do is just keep shooting our vector gun and the points at the end of the arrow tip are going to all blend together and make our graph. Now, obviously we have a limited amount of ammunition here, so we can't keep producing these points uh, by using an infinite number of T's. So if we just kind of randomly pick a few other ones, like maybe I'll choose uh, five. If I let t be 5, I have 5 minus 5, which of course is 0, and then the negative 1 is still there. So what I'm looking at here is that the vector r evaluated at 5 is just going to be 0, negative 1. Now what that does is that takes aim down here straight to that point, and boom, we have another point that would lie on our graph. Let's choose t equal 7. 7 minus 5 is 2. The y component is still negative 1. This all means that the vector function evaluated at 7 would be 2, negative 1. And I think by now you start to see what's truly happening here. No matter where we or what we plug in for t, we're producing points that just seem to lie on this horizontal line down here, y equal negative 1. And that would work for all values of t, which means we have a wide array of x coordinates, so to speak. But I would put an arrow here to indicate that that is the direction that this particular curve is going to be traveling. Now let's do the same kind of thing with example 13. We want to graph it. However, it's a little bit trickier to set this up by using a table of values because we're going to have to be digging through all of these different trig ratios and nobody wants to do that. So there's a bit of a trick that you can do with a problem like this. And if you recall, when we were working with parametric equations, we used the same exact trick. If you were to let x or x of t, I'll say x for short, be the i component and let y be the j component. Now you want to be conscious of the fact that that component does consist of a negative value. 
that makes a little bit of difference at the end of the problem. Now, if you recall, whenever we have cosine isolated and sine isolated, squaring them has been a very beneficial. And that's the trick here. If you square both sides of these two equations, you would obtain the following. And I hope that makes sense to you all. Now, what might make might not make sense is why are we squaring these? It's a great question. Why don't we isolate on the two trig words squared? In other words, get those two guys by themselves. So that means we would divide a 16 over and we would divide a 4 over. Now, again, why? Why is that helpful? Well, if you were to add the sine squared and the cosine squared together, the two things on the left sides, we get 1. Therefore, if you add the two things on the right sides by the transitive property, you would have to get 1 as well. And then you have this expressed as a, an equation that might be a little bit more familiar. A lot of it depends on how robust your conic section topics were when you were learning this in, in maybe Algebra 2 or pre-calculus. But this is the graph of an ellipse. We know that because we have the sum of two squared uh, variables x and y, and we have different denominators. And we know that this ellipse is centered at 0, 0 because there's no other value added or subtracted to each of these. And we know that 16 square root of is 4, so we count out 4 in the x direction. That's going to give us a major axis of 4. Uh, and 4, which is 8. And then we count out two units in the y direction. That gives us a total major axis length of 4, 2 above and 2 below the center. And you basically just try to connect the dots as best you can without drawing a diamond, without making it look too much like a football. It's supposed to be elliptical. Sometimes I do a good job. Sometimes I get like maybe a B plus on this one. So there is our ellipse. That's essentially what this graph is going to look like, except we don't have its orientation. So we have to spend just a little bit of time thinking about that by setting up just a few small values in our table. So maybe we try 0. It's a great place to start. We have 4 cosine of 0, which is 4 times 1, and then negative 2 times the sine of 0, which is 0. That means we're starting right here at the point 4, 0 when t is 0. Now, if you want to try to figure out what's going to happen, you could plug in pi. You could plug in pi over 2. I'm going to tell you pi over 2 is probably better because I know for a fact that pi is going to take you over here to this point, negative 4, 0. And it's too difficult to tell if you went clockwise or counterclockwise. But if you try pi over 2, 4 times the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And then negative 2 times the sine of pi over 2 is negative 2 times 1. And so it turns out we're down here at pi over 2. Maybe that comes as a surprise. So this particular orientation is going to be in a clockwise fashion. You really only need to put one arrow there, but I like to put one in each quadrant to make it fairly obvious what's happening. Take note, this minus sign turned out to be very, very important because had it not been there, and this would have been a plus, it would change the orientation to counterclockwise. These are very easy to graph on whatever graphing calculator you use. If you try to open your calculator into the graphing edit screen and you ask yourself, how do I put my calculator into vector mode? Well, there is no such thing as vector mode on most every graphing calculator that I see. And the reason is because vectors are just parametric equations. And that's really the theme um, I'm trying to convey throughout all of these videos from topic 9.4 is that the way to approach a vector problem in calculus is to think of it parametrically. I definitely hope this helps. We've got lots of things in store for you, like finding the limits of vectors, doing some vector operations, and we're going to finish up 
teaching you how to take the derivative of a vector value function. Stick around for that. Thanks for joining.